Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, Atlanta. Good morning, Southeast, East Coast, West Coast, wherever you are in the world, good morning. I am thrilled. We are thrilled that you're here, that you stop by and um, take a moment to discover the daily huddle. And before you go anywhere, I have a joke for you. Uh, this is a very, this is, this is a breakthrough for me. Do you know why, Sorel, do you know why the bread, bread is a lot like the sun? Hmm. It's hard on the outside and fluffy on the inside. Uh, I'd like that guess, though, because <laughs> it rises in the yeast and it sets in the waste. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one's good. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, good morning, good morning. You're probably still laughing. Your sides are splitting and you're going crazy because you know the bread does rise in the yeast and sets in the waste. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Wherever you are, welcome to the Daily Huddle. Today we've got a phenomenal conversation uh, led by my very dear friend Giovanni Gonzalez. I'll introduce him to you in a bit. But before we get started, uh, actually, before we get started, I want you to know the question of the day is the three barriers that prevent you from reinventing your future. Three barriers that prevent you from reinventing your future. And that conversation is going to come live to you uh, from Giovanni Gonzalez, who's leading a workshop, the same kind of workshops being led to the United Nations and other large organizations transforming teams and transforming organizations across the world. So you want to tune in. But before we get started, I have a few questions. Stan the man, good morning. Good morning, Sorrel. Stan, what time is it? And wow. what are you grateful for? Wow, the time is now, Sorrel. It's the only time we truly have now. And I'm grateful that I have this now because I didn't have to wake up and see you, so I'm, I'm grateful for that. Welcome home, Stan. Welcome home. Good morning, CC. It's great to see you. Great to have you. Tell me, where are you? Hello, this is CC. I am right here, right now. <laughs> right here, right now. And yesterday, you, you know, some time ago, you promised to hug some strangers. How did that go? Well, they were all looking at me, but I looked at looked at them back. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, who are you going to hug today? Um, I'm a hug a tree today. No, I'm playing. Um, I'm gonna hug somebody. I don't know who, but I'm gonna hug somebody today. Awesome, awesome. Well, my last question goes to my partner, Giovanni Gonzalez. Gio. Tell me, how are you? Thank you, Sorrel. Uh, I am how I say I am. And today I say I am curious. Indeed, you are the way you say you are. And today you are curious. And I know my friend Giovanni Gonzalez folks to be curious, but mostly curious about what it takes to reinvent someone's future. Curious about the barriers that are in the way of that reinvention. And he has dedicated his life to being curious about that so that the difference he's committed to making the world gets made. And he stops at nothing. Currently, our team is working with the United Nations, making that very difference. And this weekend, Giovanni Gonzalez is leading a work, a, a leadership retreat a two-day leadership retreat dedicated to that very question. Uncovering, discovering the barriers and dealing with the barriers to reinventing yourself. And today, you get a taste of that workshop inside of the next 15 minutes in a conversation with our friend, Giovanni Gonzalez. Gio, 
Welcome to your own show. Welcome to the Daily Huddle. I'm excited about this weekend's uh, uh, retreat, and I can't wait to hear what you're creating with the world. Thank you, Sorel. This is so great to be here in this context. And uh, and like you were mentioning, Sorel, the, the question is, three barriers that prevent you from reinventing your future. And... Um, I'm going to assert that everybody on this call and whoever stops by the by the whoever stops by the daily huddle later, uh, virtually um, has that notion in mind. How do I create the future? How do I how do I uh, twist things, uh, adjust things so that the future looks the way I want it to be? Right and and uh, and and that the circumstances become. Uh, um, milestones or bricks for the opportunity to build a future that they want and that I want, that people want. And so, um, however, there are barriers that prevent people from reinventing their future, whether they want it or not, they, whether they're committed to it or not, right? I, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to start first by saying that whatever I'm going to say at this point, this is like being in the course right here tomorrow. Whatever I'm going to say at this point, there is no truth in it. Now, that's not one of the barriers that I'm going to talk about. This is a bonus barrier, okay? The truth tends people to get um, whatever they call the truth is, whatever the notion they have about uh, the opportunity of that a business is, that opportunity that their partners are, that the opportunity that their children are, how people should be, how people shouldn't be, whatever it is that we hold to be an opinion about something, most people don't hold things as an opinion, they hold things as the truth. And in that moment, when people do that unconsciously, the truth becomes what they get stuck with. And someone who is committed to reinventing the future or creating the future in a particular way, the truth gets in the way. And so in our courses, one of the things that we do is to give people the tools to be flexible with what they say the truth is or what they say, what they hold to be true, just to be flexible, not to take, uh, not to dismiss the validity of their convictions of what they hold to be truth. No to be flexible so that in the opportunity of reinventing the future, there is um, the what they, what they say is true, no longer it's in the way of reinventing something. And um, anyway, so I wanted to say that whatever I'm gonna say here, is not the truth. That's the first thing I wanna say. Now, bonus number two, this is not the first barrier, but bonus number two, any external change, and, and, and this is not the truth, but I hold it to be true, right? Any external change that you want in your life happens only when there is an internal change. Any external change, any outcome you want to create for yourself, not, you know, not what you want to create for others, what you want to create for yourself happens when there is an internal change. And that really takes something. So let's discover the first barrier, Sorel. And then, you know, you and I can discuss it or go to the second barrier. The first barrier I say is to discover for yourself that you never wake up in the future. You and I always wake up into what? That's the first barrier. The first barrier is that you and I never wake up into the future. That you always wake up into what? You gotta let this land. You, you kind of have to get close to this conversation. You kind of have to stop what you're doing because I'm telling you the first barrier. <laughs> Without having a breakthrough on this, you can't reinvent the future. You no. cannot... The future is, doesn't exist. There is no future out there. 
There is no future out there. There are predictable things about tomorrow, but there are no, there's no future out there waiting for you necessarily. There's no future. Really, like you and I, you and I live our lives like there is a future. Like we can go to the future, like we can touch the future. But you and I never wake up into the future. What do we wake up into? What do you wake up into? Lela, Lela, I know you are paying attention. I can see you present to the conversation. The answer is kind of simple, right? Lela, what do you wake up into? If you don't wake up into the future, what do you wake up into? Um, you got me. I, I wake up hopeful. Yeah, uh, but not in the future, right? Uh, right. Well, what did you wake up into today? This morning you woke up. Did you wake up into the future? No, I woke up into the now. Into the present, right? <laughs> yes, present. but thank you, Lela. Thank you for playing with me, right? <laughs> yeah, you, you're like you and I create all these plans. We go crazy creating plans and having expectations and and adjusting our particular way of looking at life. And we go into arguments, we go into disappointments, we go into all these things so that we can create the future we want. Never realizing that you and I, no matter how intentionally we are, never wake up in the future. Never wake up into the future. So if I don't wake up into the future, what do I wake up into? I wake up into the present for the rest of my life. So if I wanna alter the future, what do I gotta alter, Sorel? It's kind of obvious, isn't it? Kind of, but not really. <laughs> I know. You know, the, the, the immediate answer would be, I have to alter what's here right now, who I am right here right now, what I'm dealing with right here right now. And as we always say on the daily huddle, I am here. And now is the only time I can impact. So yes, to reinvent our future, I got to reinvent the present, who I am for the present. This is, uh, this is all there is for the rest of our lives. All I have is today. This is all, all I have is today. So I, it's, this yeah. is it. Now, However I'm going now. to be today will create my future. There's no access to the future without today. Go ahead. Sir. So hang on one second. You, you said something really powerful. You said, gosh, you know, after Layla said, yeah, I woke up in the now, the present. And I said, well, the, to alter the future, you have to alter the present. That seems kind of obvious. And you say, no, that's not so obvious. And I don't want that to just gloss over. Tell us a little bit more about why it's not so obvious. It's not so obvious because the my brain, your brain, my brain, our brain makes has no powerful relationship with the now. The, the brain already survived the now. The brain is looking into the future, is going into the future to be able to survive the now, but the now already survived. So, however, there is some intentional thinking that we all do, particularly the people who are at the Daily Huddle. We have intentional thinking that wants to create a new future, that wants to be a contribution to others, that want to create a particular life, and absent of having a powerful relationship with today. Today is all I have access to, to transform the future. So if I want to transform the future, reinvent the future, I got to have a powerful relationship with today. So the question is, what is in my way today to have a better today? What's in my way today to have a better today? Not to have a better future, but to have a better today, the best version of my, myself today, what's in my way? And that's a good question that we get people in, in the course. And that's a good question to play with for today. Yeah, for today. So what is the second barrier? Awesome. Now here's, this is a critical one and most people don't, <laughs> most people don't want to hear this one, 
I don't want to hear this one. However, it is critical to reinvent the future. The second aspect to reinvent the future is to be able to recognize what you're tolerating, the pain that you're tolerating. And at the same time, you know, like you and I are tolerating a particular pain right now. There is an aspect of today, the present that you're tolerating, that you're just glossing over. You're saying things like, well, this is the way life is. This is how things happen. This is how it's going to be. There's a particular pain that you're tolerating. And you've got to discover for yourself how resigned you are about that. And for some people, how cynical you are about that. As, as absent of recognizing your resignation about the opportunity of the future that you want today, how resigned I am about what I want. I had a client many years ago who uh, she was uh, in her 40s, more or less. And she said, uh, you know, I wanted I always wanted to be a lawyer. But then my children came and my relationship came and I got really close and then life happens. And then so that just became something that I put in the back burner. I'm just not going to do it. And uh, it's not important to me anymore. Right. You can see her resignation. And then she says, it's not important to me anymore. The cynicism. And then, I, you know, in the conversation, we discovered together. Well, if you were a lawyer today, would that be important to you? Would that be kind of cool today? If you had a magic wand, you know, and then you were a lawyer today, you would say, yes, I'll take it. Or really, it's not important. You say, I don't take it. And she said, no, I'll take it. I'll definitely take it. It's something I always wanted to do. And in that moment, she discovered for herself her resignation about the opportunity of the future. But the resignation is not in the future. The resignation is today. I am resigned today. I'm cynical today. And the, the thing that most people struggle with, and certainly I struggle with, is that I'm very good at seeing other people's resignation. I am really good at seeing people's cynicism about the opportunity of the future, but I can't see mine. The way I see my resignation is by providing evidence, becoming really good at evidence that my circumstances are so big, you know, they're so great, you, you know, like I can't go in that, I can't take my life in that direction. I won't do that. You see, because I am responsible. You see, because I got things to pay. You see, because that. And then we provide this overwhelming evidence for why overwhelming evidence to not discover that who I am in the present is someone who's resigned. And so we want to break that up in a conversation. So that's the second aspect, Sarah. That is, you know, this is just like the first aspect, right? It's not so obvious that when I'm resigned, I'm resigned right here, right now. When mm -hmm. I'm cynical, I'm cynical right here, right now. So in the same context, if I'm going to do anything about my resignation, I need to deal with the resignation. That's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. now. Right now. I need right to be now. able to smell it. You know, when I with, with, I found, Sorel, when I have been able to get close enough to my resignation, I start smelling it, it stinks. And naturally, I'll do something about it. But absent of getting close, it won't stink. He won't do anything about that. <laughs> awesome. So what about the third one? The third one, it's really, really difficult for folks. Maybe not for the daily huddle community, maybe. But for the most part, it's really difficult for people to get to see for themselves. Now, this one is, if, if, I could, if I could put a priority on the third barrier, I would put it as number one. Now, I don't like doing that because one is not more important than the other one, but see if you could, uh, if you could hear what I'm saying, the priority of it without making it the most important one. The third one, is to seek to be part of a new community that supports you in seeing your circumstances in a different way. So for the most part, human beings are stuck with, I really mean it, you're stuck with the way that you think. 
and the way that you are, you're stuck with it. You're chained to it. Humans, human beings, you and I, we don't think necessarily every day differently. We think every day the same way. And the people who are really close to us, our children, our significant other, you know, the people who are really close to us have already molded to the way that we are. They molded themselves to the way that we are. They accept the way that we are. They accept our notions. And they won't really like challenge our notions because they are afraid of losing a relationship with us. They are afraid of losing a relationship with you. Although your family and your closest friends are an emotional support, for the most part, they're not a growth support. They're just emotional support for some people, not for all of us, but for some people. So in order to grow, you got to seek a new community that the kind of community that constantly challenges you to see things differently, to contribute in the way that you think often. And in their way that they communicate, the way that they interact with each other, you begin to associate or you begin to challenge your own notions, the way that you see life and the way you don't see life, in a way in which you allow yourself organically to grow. So this is the third barrier. People don't look <laughs> for a new community, don't look to, to expand their community, and they get stuck in, this, in a small world. Your growth is in the community you're in. Absent of expanding your community is very difficult to actually reinvent the future. Really difficult. So that's the third barrier, Sorel. Thank you. You know, the community you've been in, the community I've been in, and it's a community that gave me the present I have. So it's really difficult to reinvent the future by continually reinventing today while staying in the very community that created my todays up to now. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, there's a bonus barrier that you wanted to give, Gio, and uh, it's 23 after. Let's go through the bonus and then let's open it up for questions. The bonus... Right. Today, we'll give a lot of bonuses. The bonus is that one of the most simple actions to uh, take for a human being is to be curious. And now most people just give lip service to the opportunity of being curious. Everybody says, oh, I'm open minded and I'm curious. But the actions are not correlated with that. And I love one of the things that have made the most difference in my life is Albert Einstein, Albert Einstein quote. He says, and at some point he said, I have no special talent. I'm just passionately curious. Now, if you could allow yourself to let that dig in in your life, what am I going to be curious about? And take a journey in that direction and discover a new community in that which you are curious about. You get to reinvent the future without any effort what I wanted to say. Giovanni, the people who are going to be participating with you this weekend will never be the same. And I'm clear that everyone who's listening and participating here are no longer the same. So being that you're no longer the same, what are you creating? What are you discovering for yourself? What questions do you have? What comments do you have for Giovanni? This is Lella. I, I put in the chat, when we don't change, when we don't hear about a forum like this and we don't participate, we die on the vine. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah. Being stuck in the future is essentially what it looks like when you're dying on the vine. Hmm. Yeah, thank you, Lela. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Now, now, discovering a new community is different than listening to a podcast. When you're listening to a podcast, there, your notions about life are being challenged in some degree, but it's in the context of entertainment. And in the context of entertainment, you're kind of like looking at a movie where it has uh, cool notions, cool points of views, and they're cool to reflect. However, that's not what I'm pointing to. 
What I'm pointing to is actually discovering a community, being part of a community, something like the Daily Huddle, where other people get to share points of views that challenge a notion. And in that completely different way of looking at things allows me to challenge my own notions. And it creates a space for curiosity. Yeah, very good. Any other comments? Any other questions, comments? They're thinking about the future, Giovanni. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a it's a complete <laughs> journey <laughs> in the present. Yeah. Now tell us a little bit about how this uh, leadership retreat is going to unfold and how people can connect to it, learn more about it. It's not too late to register. Why not? Yes. Well, first of all, it's in Spanish. And the, the link I'm going to put in the chat is called Reinvent the Future, Reinvent Your Future US in Spanish. And I'm going to put it in the chat. So one of the things that I can say about that, Sorel, is that after, you know, at this point, coaching hundreds of people, maybe thousands of people personally in our group sessions, um, there are certain aspects, there are particular aspects that gets people to not be powerful with the present that people are not powerful with today you know there's a book called by john maxwell today matters and, and he really unfolds what, the how how critical it is to take a look at your today what does to, your today looks like and in 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 our coaching sessions we notice that people don't take simple actions to reinvent their, their future. Simple actions like picking up the phone, like calling somebody, like doing a follow-up, like creating a, a, a plan of action, like unfolding a, a, a plan of action. People don't take them. And when we look at a little bit deeper, why don't you take um, those actions for the opportunity of the future? One of the reasons is for a disempowering relationship that people have with failure. There is this... Um, there is this emotion that holds you and I really they hijack who we are around failing. And so we look at, we go deeper in that. Well, where, where was my first relationship with failure? When was the first time I had a failure in my life? And, and we engage in a conversation like that so that people actually think about it. Well, when was the first time I failed at something and, and or I failed at myself or I had a very big disappointment? And when people discover that, then it frees something up. Then after that, Sorel, after freeing something up, discovering, talking about it, what was my first failure? It's usually when you're really young. Then we write a letter to the person that you were at the time. You've got to write a letter. You've got to forgive that person that created that scenario. And so the exercise of actually writing, actually taking on and remembering that scenario and actually writing that letter and forgiving that person, you, forgiving you for whatever it is that you did, right? It opens up a space. And then in the same time, while you're doing that letter, then you, another aspect of that letter is to acknowledge yourself for trying to do something because failure only happens when you're trying to do something. So then you acknowledge yourself for that. And then we all talk about it in group. And then at that point, there is a clear paradigm shift for people around failure. They really get a sense of, wait a minute, what's been holding me my entire life is my relationship with failure, not actually the threat itself. And then people are free. Anyway, that's a, a little bit of a sense. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's going to be amazing. And Giovanni, thank you for giving the world a taste of it to the three barriers today. And as you post the link into the chat and on Facebook, uh, I'm inviting you. And not you, Giovanni, but you who's listening, wherever you're listening, get clear. 
that you never wake up in the future. You wake up today. Get clear that how you live your life today, how resigned you are today, you don't resolve that tomorrow. You resolve that right now by getting present. Giovanni, you said it so well. You get so present to your resignation that it starts to stink and you get fed up. And that's when you do something about it. And last but not least, get yourself into a community that's practicing doing that over and over, over and over. Because guess what? The community you're in right now, and we're not saying go leave your people. No, we're saying get into a community that gives you a new today, not the today that you've had. Jill, if you are going to say one sentence or two to the world to complete today's conversation, what would you say, brother? One sentence or two. Um, I think that one of the things that have made the most difference for me is to surrender to what you love mm. and create a community around it. Thank you. Surrender now to what you love. There's no tomorrow. That's our show. The Daily Huddle happens every weekday morning from 9 a.m. to 9.30 a.m., Monday through Friday. We're here. And we're so glad you're here. We'll end today with this. Our seven plus one tenets. Love. Yeah. Love. That's just it. Eat mostly plant-based. Laugh out loud and stress less. Give of yourself. Give of your stuff. Sleep. And move your body. And last but not least, check yourself before you wreck yourself. This is today's Daily Huddle, folks. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. We'll see you on Monday morning. One love, guys. Have a great weekend. Have a great weekend, Rashida.